I want to welcome you all to NMO Advocacy in Action today. My name is Lisa McDaniel, and I have the honor and the privilege of serving as consulting advocate for the Guthrie Jackson Charitable Foundation. Now, in the next few minutes, we're going to talk, about, talk to some wonderful advocates here, and I want you guys to realize one thing, though, while they're talking. There are no big or small parts in advocacy. There's only advocacy. And each one of you out in the room can make a huge difference in the world. One person can change the world, as we've already seen today, because we know Bill and Victoria started this wonderful foundation, right? From two people. So you can all do this. Now, my part of advocacy is lunch and learns. I like to travel around to doctors, and I like to tell them about NMO. I go at lunchtime, so I call them Lunch and Learns. Now, anybody can do that. It's very easy. Also, you can do it for your friends or family. You can do it for emergency rooms. You can do it for clinics. You can do it for anyone who will listen to you. And that's the key. Don't take no for an answer. Keep talking until someone lets you talk back, OK? Now, I'm, gonna, I'm very excited. Are you guys excited to hear what all our advocates are doing? I'm very excited about this. So I'm going to turn it over and let them talk to you guys for a few minutes. But remember, there's no big or small parts. There are only advocates. OK, thank you so much. I'm just going to grab the clicker here. All right, well, hi, everyone. My name is Katherine Ford. And first off, I want to thank everyone who is a part of the Guthy Jackson Charitable Foundation from the bottom of my heart. Four years ago, I found out that I had been misdiagnosed with MS for 22 years, and honestly, I was devastated. But I had a couple of doctors who really encouraged me to use the wellness research that I was doing to help others. So what I decided to do was go ahead and take my many years of corporate coaching experience that I had and m sort of merge that with all of the research I had done in holistic and integrative medicine, and then just take all of that and help other people like myself. So I, I went ahead and did that, and now I am a master life coach and consultant. I attended continuing education through Harvard Medical School's coaching in leadership and healthcare, and I'm a member of their Institute of Coaching Professional Association. But the best part is, and the part that I love, is helping other people like me who want to make the rest of their life the best of their life, regardless of any diagnosis. So what I love doing is sharing my seven steps to my Oceans of Wellness program, and I'm going to share those with you today. I call them waves of wellness. The first one is to really develop your personal passion. And this is a, a prescription for each of us that's unique to each of us. I love to tell my clients that the best part of my prescriptions, they only have positive side effects. Another wave that we take a deep dive into is self-care. That's a huge wellness wave. And I really believe that self-care is the new health care. We also take a, a dive into gratitude, into peace, into self-worth, grace, and joy. Seven keys to living a life of excellence, no matter what. Now, I'd love to share more with you on each of those waves today. I don't have a lot of time to do that. We're just going to dive into my three top self-care secrets. But I did put together a gift for all of you. So if you have your cell phone ready and you'd like, just pull it out. And if you'd like to get this gift, just text the word GIFT to 66866, and you'll receive the free gift. Again, that's just G-I-F-T to 66866. So let's jump into these waves. So these self-care secrets. So the first one is to experience happiness every day. And happy means healthy. Dr. Barbara Fredrickson's research shows us that when we can experience certain types of happiness, it makes all the difference on what kinds of chemicals are released from our own inner pharmacy. The next one is to live in the vibration of self-love. And Victoria talked about love this morning, and I really believe that love is the most powerful vibration on our planet. And actually, a physician once said that he felt that love was the best medicine for humans. And someone said, well, what if it doesn't work? And he said, increase the dose. So I, I love that. And last is relentless pampering. 
Now this one is really fun because it doesn't have to, it doesn't have to cost a thing. One of the things that I love to do to practice this point is to take a walk every morning with my little dog, Teddy. He's a five-pound Yorkie. And we, I live at the beach in Santa Monica, so we go out and take a peek at the dolphins and just listen to the birds and allow the world of nature to wake up around us. It's just magnificent. And another way that we all can practice this is through various meditative breathing exercises. And I've got a quick one I'm going to take you through right now. It's very easy, very powerful. And so I want you all to just sit back and relax. It takes less than a minute. It has the power to reset your nervous system from that fight or flight side of your nervous system to your calming side, your peaceful side. So if you're feeling stressed, this is a beautiful exercise to do. So go ahead and sit back and relax and close your eyes because when we close our eyes, we're able to open our hearts further. And just follow along with me. Take a deep breath in through your nose to the count of three, breathing in love. One, two, three, and hold it. And now exhale all your cares and concerns to the count of six through your mouth. One, two, three, four, five, six. And again, a deep breath in through your nose, breathing in love. One, two, three, and hold it. And now exhale all your cares and concerns. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Now before you open your eyes, I'd like you to check in with yourself and just see how that felt to have that wave of peace wash over your entire being. All right, and finally, I just want you all to know that I have a book coming out in October. I'm very excited about it, and the title for the book was inspired by Victoria. Four years ago, when I attended my first patient day, she gave me a big hug, and she said, be well. And I'll tell you, those words just touched my heart that I decided, so much so, I decided to title my book, Project Be Well. So thank you, Victoria, and be well, everyone. Hi, everybody. I'm Lelania Lloyd, and I come from Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. Um, I have some exciting things to share with you about what's going on in Canada right now. Um, so in 2012, um, the MS Society of Canada began an initiative to seek the engagement of people in the MS community and invited them to join with researchers and clinicians in the independent research review process. By including community representation, they hope to increase the participation of people affected by MS with their research program and in general, um, in general and in particular to directly involve them in the recommendation of research grants and awards funded by the society. Two years ago, the MS Society of Canada included those living with allied diseases such as NMO, transverse myelitis, and I know I'm going to mess this up, acute decimated encephalomyelitis, the ADEM, ADEM, to their mandate and to offer them the same support services as those living with MS. Uh, Dr. Trabolsi was uh, instrumental in making that come about. Um, so this pa past October, I was selected to be the community representative for British Columbia, and this was the first time that someone living with NMO was appointed to this position. So that was really exciting. In late January this year, I flew out to Toronto to meet with the Personnel Awards Committee at the MS Society of Canada office. The Personnel Awards Committee is responsible for reviewing grant, research grant applications for studentships. So that's masters, doctor doctorals, and postdoctoral fellowship applications that are involved in both biomedical research and clinical and popula population health research. This committee was comprised of 11 researchers and clinicians, two MS Society grant staff, an MS Society intern, the vice president of research, and four community reps, which included me. That's them in the photo there. Um, 
In all, in the boardroom, we were filled to capacity with 19 people working as a team. Of that team, uh, of 18 people aside from me, there was one person who knew what NMO was. That's changed. They all know now. The entire committee spent six weeks prior to the meeting working hard on the reviews. Um, I personally reviewed 24 of the 63 grant applications our committee was responsible for. I spent countless hours learning new words. Thank goodness for Google. <laughs> In some cases, Google did not help because there were no such thing. Um, and uh, trying very hard to understand a few applications that were exceptionally complicated. It was really challenging work. Um, but at the end of the process, I felt very um, excited and proud about the work that our committee accomplished together. Um, and I learned a lot about myself. Um, it was a huge leap of faith for me to step out of that comfort zone, but uh, I'm richer for having taken it. And I'm pleased to share that I was invited to serve as a community rep for 2016 as well. Um, and I look forward to continuing to advocate on behalf of both the MS and the NMO communities to continue to raise awareness for NMO and to strengthen the ties between the two communities. Uh, two weeks ago, I received an email from the BC Yukon Division of the MS Society about a new campaign the National Office is launching, inviting me to work with them on the project. So I sent an email back and I said, you do know that I have NMO and not MS, right? And they replied that yes, they did know and they were purposely looking to include me. I can't give you specific details about the project yet because it's still in progress, but they've worked really hard uh, to make a concerted effort to be inclusive of those of us who are living with NMO. And it's a national campaign, so I'm hoping that it will help to increase awareness for NMO across Canada. Um, we also have uh, just started a telesupport program um, for the NMO community through the MS Society. So once a month, we have a number that we can call into as a group, and it covers people uh, in British Columbia, and we also have people joining us from uh, Alberta and Saskatchewan as well, and that's a brand new initiative that they have, and we're looking to grow that group. Um, over the last three years, I've also been volunteering with the University of British Columbia's Interprofessional Health Mentors Program. This is a unique educational experience in which teams of students from different health disciplines, including audiology, dentistry, genetic counseling, kinesiology, medicine, nursing, occupational therapy, pharmacy, physical therapy, and speech and language pathology, learn together from and with a mentor. The health mentors are adults with a chronic condition and or disability or caregivers who provide long-term care to a loved one with chronic conditions or disability. The mentors share their personal stories and help students learn about patient-centered and collaborative care. Each group is made up of one mentor and four students, and they work together for a period of 16 months. In April, the students and mentors meet to summarize and share their learning at the annual symposium. This, invet, this event includes poster board displays created by each of the groups and allows the opportunity for guests to talk with students and mentors about their experiences in the program. Guthy Jackson has been really lovely about sending us flyers that we hand out and because we're different and nobody's ever heard of the disease, we're really popular. <laughs> so we get to uh, share with about 200 people at that event. I'm currently working with my third co cohort of students and that's been um, immensely rewarding to work with such promising health care providers, uh, future health care providers, and to have a hand in helping shape their futures. Um, the great part about participating in this program is that my students really get an in-depth look at how I experience NMO in my everyday life, and they share this, this with other students in their programs. And recently, one of my students, who's already graduated, emailed me to tell me she received a patient with NMO. It was really exciting to know that what she learned was being put to use to help someone else. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Ali Seymour, and I'm going to stand up because I think better. And forgive me if I stutter, because this is the first time I've ever spoke in front of this many people. So um, on the screen, Coming up, okay, it's not there yet, sorry. That is one of my paintings. Um, thanks to MNMO and its disability with my hands, um, I decided to devote my life to painting and spreading the word about NMO through the art. 
So some of you saw on Guthy Jackson's Facebook page recently, we put out a call to artists to participate in my first show, which opened Saturday. And the response from you guys was huge. Submissions were less, but hopefully the next one will get a ton of people. And we are, through the art and through your stories that you sent in and the pieces you sent in, we're educating a ton of people about NMO. Um, everybody in the art community in Pittsburgh, we have interviews coming up with the local news. Um, so, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm losing my place. This is very nerve-wracking looking at all your beautiful faces. <laughs> um, but I guess my point is, is that something that, you know, on the outside looked like it was a disability for me. Um, last year when I was diagnosed, I lost a lot of functioning in my hands. I thought my art was going to be gone. Instead, I decided to persevere through it and started painting with the only thing that I could hold or control at the time, which was paper towels. So this was painted completely with paper towels. All of my art is done now with paper towels. Brushes never touch my canvas. And through this, even with people not in the NMO community, I've had perfectly healthy people come up to me and say, you know, you're inspiring me to push myself harder. You're inspiring me to work harder and not make excuses. And there's always a, if there's a will, there's a way. And my slogan for all of my art stuff is life is my canvas, love is my brush. Because I think as we go through this crazy world, no matter whether you're sick, healthy, or not, as long as you approach everything from a place of love, you can't go wrong. So I'm so happy that I get to be up here, and I'm so happy I got to come and meet all of you guys, and I'm so happy that I can do whatever I can to tell everybody about NMO and show them that, you know, we're not just a disease. And sadly, you know, when people find out, they see the disease and they lose the person. But with our little things and showing them every day, we, we can be a lot more than just a diagnosis. Um, something else that I'm starting to do in Pittsburgh before my diagnosis, I was working as a family therapist, um, predominantly with children. Through the art, I'm now going to start developing a program for art therapy um, geared mostly towards people with chronic illnesses, um, hoping to have a private practice set up by the end of the year because the art has been very therapeutic for me and I'm hoping that you don't have to be a good artist to use art in a therapeutic manner. All you have to do is be brave and let yourself go. And there is, um, it's an interesting fact that there's something called cognitive overload. So your brain can only process so much information at one time. So when my pain gets really bad, if I can distract myself with painting, I don't feel the pain anymore. So I'm hoping you know, that I can come up with a program so that other people can take that technique of cognitively overloading yourself with something amazing and something beautiful and something useful to help cope with this and hopefully make everybody's lives a little bit better. So. I think we got through that okay, and thank you guys all so much, and pardon me for being alive. Thank you. Okay, well that was amazing. I can't really top that. Um, <laughs> um, truly inspirational. And uh, that's kind of what I wanted to talk to you guys about, too. Um, about, um, my name is Jaden Barrett. Um, I was diagnosed with NMO when I was 14. Uh, and um, it took me a while to kind of find my place in this world. Um, but I did. Um, a few years ago, um, I took over as program director for a, uh, a Paralympic sport club um, located a ways from here out in Iowa. Um, and a Paralympic sport club is a nonprofit organization dedicated to providing athletic opportunities, recreational opportunities, to people with physical disabilities and visual impairments. Um, uh, it, it really fits, you know, NMO took away my ability to walk, but I can still play sports. Um, NMO, you know, it, it, took, it took away my vision in my left eye, and, well, people like to throw things at me from that direction, that's really all that changed. <laughs> um, my point is, is that, you know, in this life, there's nothing that you can't do. You just have to do it, you know, a little differently. And, uh, and that's really what our organization, well, that's really what our organization stands for. Um, you know, NMO presents a lot of challenges in our lives, but I, I kind of like to look at it 
uh, from the perspective of uh, Martin Luther King's uh, Martin Luther King Jr.'s favorite, famous words. You know, if uh, if you can't run, you know, walk forward. If you can't walk forward, crawl. And just no matter what, don't quit moving. And uh, I think I think our organization really stands for that. Um, now I know this is located in Iowa, but the information I really wanted to portray to you guys is that the Paralympic Sport Clubs are located all across the nation. We're in all 50 states, um, and and I, the promise I can make to you is that there is nobody in this room that wouldn't be able to take part in in a sport. It's what we do. We do whatever it takes to make it work, and. Um, I know I've heard this quite a few times today, and I know you guys have as well. You know, the doctors, and I think just about any doctor, hopefully you'll take my side with this, um, is that athletic activity, physical activity is good for you. The, the benefits are, you know, they're undeniable. I mean, there, there's, there's clinical papers, no, I'm sorry, I don't, I'm not much of a doctor, but uh, there's a lot of papers out there that I've read that, that show that depression, anxiety, um, muscle pain, um, it decreases with physical activity. Um, I've experienced the benefits in myself and I've seen it in a lot of the, a lot of the kids that we work with. Um, so I don't have any information up there, but please feel free to you know, reach out to me if you see me. I can, I can get you in contact with a Paralympic Sport Club that may be near you. Um, and uh, I, I hope some people can benefit from these programs because I know a lot of people don't know about it. Um, so I, I, I hope I hope I can talk to a couple of you guys talk to a couple of you guys afterwards and uh, and maybe uh, give you some additional information. So uh, well, thanks for listening to me and uh, and I'll hand it over to. Uh, Hi, uh, my name is Sue McCallion, and I am from Granger, Indiana, which is a little suburb of South Bend. If you know Notre Dame, that's where we're at. Um, I'm from a small community, and I've had NMO for 15 years now. Uh, misdiagnosed for several years. Um, finally had left my physician in South Bend and drove two and a half hours to Chicago to, I was going to say, to one of the top MS research, because that's what we thought we, I had. Five minutes in, oh, you don't have that. <laughs> we don't know what we're going to call it yet, because it was way back then before Victoria got involved, and there's been a lot of research and a lot of new things coming out. Back when I started, they're like, well, we're going to treat you like these different disease but we're gonna keep calling it something different every time you come. <laughs> so finally, um, now I do know, I have, an, I have NMO. Um, one of the things that uh, I was gonna say that's brought me, I was gonna say kind of up here, um, is that uh, I've been coming to patient day, this is my fourth year. Uh, missed the first year, was very disappointed because I didn't think I could travel out to California. Um, it was a long way. I'm from the Midwest. Okay, it's kind of scary. <laughs> um, decided that that's what we were going to do. Well, I kept asking my doctor, why don't we have patient day in Chicago? Why don't we have one? This is a wonderful opportunity, and there's a lot of patients, especially in the Midwest, that can't travel out there. Um, finally, he got tired of me asking him that, and he finally turned to me and said, uh, why don't you? <laughs> and I'm like, uh, you're right, why don't I? I mean, I really don't want him taking the time to stop and to do these little scheduling things and setting up rooms and things like that. I want him in the lab. I want him doing research or seeing patients. That's what I need him to do. So he agreed with me that he would help me. He's going to set up the speakers. I'm going to do the grunt work. <laughs> Well, help, help my family, and hopefully, I was going to say, and with the help of Gunthy Jackson Foundation, um, I do not have a date yet, but we will have a patient day in Chicago, hopefully in August. So as soon as I get a date, um, it will be up and posted. So, okay. And uh, one of the things that I was going to say was also patient day, I'm going to be asking patients out here to help me too. Um, we're going to be doing flyers um, so we can get them out to the neurologist's office so we can let patients know about it, especially in these small communities. Um, like I said, personally, my, this is my mother's idea. Of course, she doesn't like my past neurologist. She, we're, we're going to go to every neurologist uh, in town with a flyer and a resource book and invite them all to come. <laughs> Let's learn about NMO. <laughs> Um, 
So and that was one of the things that we're going to do. Also, uh, another reason why I was going to say um, I'm up here is uh, I came out here with uh, my best friend for 10 years. Um, she is a physical therapist. Um, thank you. Thankfully, she's on the rehab floor in our local hospital. And we have decided since, besides me being there, um, they have another patient. And we have decided to put together an in-service that we're going to um, go and go in and teach the therapists. Um, the nurses have expressed interest, um, the rehab doctors, and actually anybody who's open to it. Um, so we can actually teach them what NMO is and how do you work with an NMO patient. Uh, one of the things I found in, I've been in rehab four or five times, <laughs> um, it's hard to work with a therapist that's never seen that. They, our recovery is different than a lot of other people see. Um, and I mean, I found myself saying, hey, why am I not doing that therapy? That would be beneficial to me. And they're like, oh, no, 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 no. We don't know if you're going to walk. I'm like, oh, no, I'm going to walk. <laughs> so um, it's really nice to be able to get out and teach them. And we're hoping that once with this in-service that we can do like a PowerPoint presentation that we can give to you out there that you can go to your rehab units in your local hospitals, and you can train your own therapist and tell them what is NMO. Um, and why do I think I can do this? Well, when I was growing up, my mom always told me, be the change you want to see. Don't wait around for somebody else to do something. Figure out a way to do it yourself. Well, that backfired on her now because now she's, well, slave labor, but, <laughs> sorry, volunteer. <laughs> So we're going to be driving two and a half hours, and we're going to be setting up, and um, hopefully I'll be educating them along with myself and everybody else. So I hope everybody, if you are in the Chicago area, come talk to me, because I'm going to need some help. <laughs> but uh, that's basically what I have to say. But thank you. Those were some really great, inspirational, encouraging stories to share. Now, we want to open it up to everyone in the audience, patients, caregivers. We want to hear what you're doing to advocate in your communities. So raise your hand. We have mics running around. I'm from Rochester, Minnesota. So if anybody is coming to Rochester and wants to do a lunch date or whatever, come, you know, talk to me and we'll go do lunch or something. <laughs> Someone else needs to have something they're doing. I mean, I know you all wear bracelets, right? Awesome. Hi. Um, my name's Nick Adams. Uh, I live in San Diego. Uh, my wife was diagnosed with NMO 2012. And uh, yeah, we were looking for something to do to you know, just raise awareness, whatever. And we've been doing the uh, Walk MS in San Diego now for, this will be our third year. And uh, what we were able to do with the help of Guthy Jackson and MS Society is uh, we're getting our funds designated to uh, the Zamville Research Project at UCSF. So the money we raise through MS Society will go towards uh, helping NMO. So we're pretty excited about that. Hi there. My name's Heather Shepard, and I'm from Burlington, Vermont, where it's fabulously frigid. And <laughs> so I've done a couple things, and it hasn't yet been financially fundraising, but just bringing awareness to NMO. Um, the first thing I did is I came to Patient Day, like in 13, and went to The Price is Right and got on stage and won some stuff. And that was awesome, but really even better than that was getting a hold of my local media. Actually, they kind of found me first and then made the story all about NMO. So it ended up becoming this fantastic opportunity in a bigger way to just say, hey y'all, this is what's going on. I was raised in Oklahoma, but we live in Vermont. So anyway, and then um, because I just like to uh, just do crazy things, I figured there should be a covert way to also let people know about NMO. And I found a way to get employed at my local hospital, which is the University of Vermont and Medical Center, 
And so I wear my bracelet that y'all gave me, and I love it. And so I wear it, and I work in registration. So I check in every patient, just like we all get checked in, give them their bracelet. I figure my job is to give them love in a bracelet. I found out that I also have to know about insurance, and that really sucked, but that's all right. And, uh, <laughs> but now I know some stuff, and that's power. So what happened, and I was hopeful that it would without me having to initiate, because that would probably be illegal, um, just the conversation by letting them see my bracelet and all these people would ask me about my bracelet. And I really loved it if they were coming for MRIs because that tends to be you know, something we're familiar with. And I could give them tips and, and cues to how to deal with their MRI, but also tell them about NMO and t just encourage them, like, you might want to look up on this. This might be interesting to you. And just kind of throw the seed out there, let it do what it will, and then just be available to my local neurologist with all the information given to us by Derek, who is such a rock star. And just, like, just continue to help populate. But I do want to start doing some kind of a luncheon deal, too. So that'll be probably my next step. But I just love that there are opportunities. I was inspired by you guys in the first meeting that we came to a year and a half ago, that there are ways big and small to be a voice about NMO. Encourage people, love people, let them see that you can live with something that sucks really awesomely though. And you know, and just be there and, and just let creativity be your, be your key. Let God, love be your guide and just see what happens. Thank you so much for your feedback. We're about to run out of time, but I want you to know I'm encouraged by hearing all the things today that we've heard. I'm encouraged to know that our patients and our caregivers are ready to get out and spread the word about NMO. Our goal should be we want people sick of hearing about NMO because we want it to be on their minds so much that they're sick of hearing about it. So make that your goal. I appreciate your time and attention today. And before we go, Many of you know our own Tracy Owens, and you know that she's been struggling lately and has been unable to come. So we have a bag for her, but what we want to do is anybody who wants to, to go to the registration table and sign this bag that's going to be sent to her, just to give her a little love from all of us. Thank you, guys.